What's up, guys? Matt Brown here from the LSR Podcast. Thanks for joining me and Dustin and Adam right here on the channel each and every week. And while you're here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments if there's anything you'd like us to tackle in a future episode. But without further ado... All right, Adam, we, uh, this is, we have gone <laughs> ad nauseum about how horrible the product has been in the, some of these w- markets where they did not have any competition. We have watched some of these lottery corporations really kind of bastardize everything that we have tried to advocate for when it comes to legalized sports betting here in D.C. We were talking about the, the Gambit D.C. company that was going on out there with some of these putrid things that we had seen before. Fortunately, at least for some, there is competition that is coming into the market. I'm going to say something that I can't say that other people can say. That's, that's a good journalist trick. All right. right. Uh, our, our friend uh, Alfonso Strafon on Twitter, who's always very on top of the news, essentially summarized the headline on this story down to Interlot was so bad that people are excited about William Hill coming into the market. Um, and that is not me saying that that is Alfonso right. saying that, right. um, because there is a reputation among, uh, some in the sports betting community of William Hill, uh, limiting and banning. We're not here to get into that. Uh, Washington DC now has a retail sports book at Capital One arena, even though there are no sports at Capital One arena, they've turned the ticket office into a sports book. William Hill has opened a retail presence there. Of course, we knew that Capital One and William Hill had a big retail deal going. That was the idea um, when this deal was consummated last year, late last year. So now you don't necessarily have to take Interlot's horrendous lines or bet with its impossible app or website. You can go in person at Capital One Arena and place your bets with William Hill. No app, because of course that's not allowed. Uh, in Washington, D.C. It is a lottery-based monopoly with that Gambit app. All of this is a clarion call to Virginia and Maryland. Hey, Virginia, get it going quickly now that you've passed it. Hey, Maryland, when you get to go to the ballot and vote on sports betting, if you want a decent product, time to say it. Dustin, I think one of the things that I'm interested in, and it maybe with there not being an app and maybe with people having to do it in person, it won't really affect anything. But I now that there is competition, will it at least force their hand to not put up these absurd numbers that we have seen float around on Twitter time and time again, where even us sit there and we just we face palm where we're just like, guys, what are you doing here? It'll be interesting at least to see how this plays out over, you know, probably more like when football season rolls around, when people are really going to be looking to to head out and make a bet, if their hand is actually forced to put up playable lines. Uh, I feel like not, but I won't won't say say that for certain, but it's just like the in-person registration problem. Like, it's so much easier to just bet on an app from sitting on your butt at home, right, than to schlep down to – uh, Capital One Arena and say, I'm going to go bet there. Like, it, certainly people who are really care about it and care about prices and stuff, they may be motivated to do that. But I, I don't think the will is going to be there. I mean, maybe if we get in more of these sports books across the city at other places, there, there are, you know, other taverns, uh, Nationals Park can have a sports book, stuff like that. Maybe we get there, but I just don't see it affecting them. And they, they've, they've basically gone on record saying our model is not the same as other other sports books we're going to drive revenue by by basically without without saying the quiet part out loud they're, they're like, by having bad prices they're going to say we're just how we're making revenue by <laughs> having the worst possible line so that you can so we make more money from that that is not going to be a, a thing that actually drives more revenue if you had better lines and uh you know a better ecosystem in terms of betters and, and welcoming them and, and keeping them on engaged that's going to be a better system but so i, I, th- I think the, the only thing that's going to move the lines is economic results if this continue if this is a an economic disaster for DC in terms of not generating the types of revenue at the forecast, then we'll see lines change until then. I think it's probably going to stay the same. Yeah, that is uh, I, I feel that way as well. I don't think that there's going to be a whole lot of motivation to put out playable things, but Adam, a boy can hope, right? I mean, we can hope that these people grow some sort of moral compass that maybe they want to come in and I don't know, give some of these new players that are giving sports betting a chance, an actual chance of winning. Matt, we also can hope that someday in Nevada, you don't have to drive down to a casino to sign up and you won't be using Atari technology in a PlayStation world. So I have hopes too. 
I, I, we do. And unfortunately, my hopes are this big. They're just, they're that big. Yeah, they're that big. Guys, as a reminder, the full version of this podcast can be found over at LegalSportsReport.com, as can the written breakdown of every topic we talk about on the show each and every week. Thanks for watching.